Welcome back, everybody. It's Tuesday, December 21st, Monday Morning Briefing, episode number 59. We're on the last little stretch here till Christmas, and we'll do a snowman update here in a little while, but all of y'all are fully aware, I'm sure, that uh, you don't have much time left. We did all of our ships last week. I had one that went out to a real good friend of ours that just lives kind of up the road, but we're not going to be able to meet them. Um, they've got some other stuff going on, and we went ahead and shipped at UPS yesterday, and UPS actually showed that it would be there tomorrow. So um, everything should be good. Everything seems to be running pretty okay. Like I said, we've had those one or two um, that are just kind of lagging around, but they ended up making it. Both of them that we talked about last week, but I've got one more that's kind of floating around a little bit. There's just going to be a few delays. We're noticing that in a few of the things that we've ordered um, just for Christmas. I've ordered from some folks oh, here and there, you know, just for some of my Christmas gifts. And... Um, some of them are or one of them is not supposed to be here until thursday possibly friday so hopefully it'll make it here by christmas if it don't it's not a big deal it's not a santa gift so hopefully you got your orders out last week um if you if you still have something to ship hopefully you can ship it today and get it out of here hopefully wherever you're shipping it to isn't very far and it'll get there in one day um i think ups may be delivering on christmas eve they usually do from what i can remember but hopefully everything that we've got out there um, that we've shipped as far as our custom Christmas orders, hopefully they'll get there by tomorrow or, uh, what is today, Tuesday? Tomorrow or Thursday by the latest, and then that way that'll be off our mind. We kind of do our own tracking in here on the on the custom pieces in particular because they're, the value of them is so high that I want to be sure that they get there. The, the few that we do that way, we'll go ahead and check on those periodically uh, every day or so and just make sure that everything got there. And that's kind of my last wrap up for Christmas is looking at my, um, my shipping history on UPS and making sure that everything that I shipped made it to its destination and that um, I can relax Christmas Day and not worry about that somebody's gift didn't make it. Um, and, and it happens occasionally. It's just nature of the beast. Everybody's got to have patience with our shipping suppliers or our shippers, um, you, whether you're using UPS, FedEx, DHL, or USPS. Um, just got to have a little patience with them because this is the busiest time of year for those folks, I'm sure, uh, much less with everything else that's been going on at, to kind of hurt the you know supply chain or whatever's going on. So um, just kind of have a little patience with them. Hopefully everything gets there. Uh, most people are pretty understanding this time of year. Um, we actually had a couple things purchased off the website that are custom leather goods that we have on there available for sale. Um, we had one purchase this morning that I'm, we're going to try to get it out of here today. We're going to go ahead and ship it today. Um, and I'm not sure exactly yet. I hadn't looked at the information to see where it's going, but um, if it is for Christmas, I'm hoping it makes it. But, you know, usually when people order something, if I was to order something on Amazon or something like that this week, I would just kind of prepare myself that I'm probably not going to have that item, you know, in my hands to be able to you know, give that gift to the uh, recipient that day. So as far as my own personal Christmas gifts that I'm buying for folks, I did order some stuff from some craftsmen online. Um, some just a, a few folks, a couple of them have been on the podcast, stuff like that. Um, some of them have not been, but may, may be on it in the future. And uh, so I just ordered some gifts for, you know, my wife and and some other people in my family, just because I think it's I think it's cool to be able to go on their website. They have stuff that's already made. It's not necessarily custom ordered. They already have it made, and I can purchase that uh, off their website and have it come. And it's still a, a custom gift. It's still a um, you know a handmade gift. And I thought that was something neat to do this year. Probably keep that going um, on in the future. But one of the things was I did order some stuff from Odin, and I'm not going to show everything I've got because um, some of those people recipients may watch this video, but. One of the things, I did buy a bunch of stuff from Odin Leather Goods, and uh, he's just got a really neat website. He's got a lot of neat stuff that's not necessarily cowboy western. It's just good quality leather, uh, very high class leather work. Uh, looks really nice, more of a contemporary kind of feel about it, as he would call it, uptown leather. And uh, I just had fun shopping on his website, and I got a few things for a few recipients. But one of the things was I bought, Claudia has already claimed this and uh, claims that it's hers. But I bought this for the shop. You know that uh, earlier in the year, we did have a fly problem in the shop and not sure what's going on with that. And um, we got it taken care of. A friend of mine had that idea with the Irish Spring and that actually really worked and actually helped a lot. Um, we're not really sure. The whole town just kind of had a, a fly situation there for a little while. And I think that comes in seasons just depending on what's going on. I don't know if it had something to do with the freeze or what. But trying to get ready for that in 2022, if we are going to have a fly problem, I want to be prepared because I'm, I'm sure some of y'all saw my makeshift fly swatter. And I happened to be on his website and saw that he actually makes and sells these leather fly swatters. And I thought that was a really neat, funny gift. And so I bought a few of these, but I bought one for the shop. And like I said, Claudia's kind of claimed it already, but I think it's gonna work good if we get a little fly situation and we'll have something to 
peck around on and and uh, and take them guys out of the shop so we don't have to worry about them. But um, I want to give a big shout out to Odin at uh, Odin Leather Goods for coming up with some really cool project uh, products and stuff. If you go on his website, he's just got a bunch of neat little things and. I bought some other stuff too, but we're not going to show all that stuff. Um, and then I just, you know, some other little things, had some stuff made. Um, I think that's really cool to be involved in a community like we are, um, the maker community just in general, whether it's blacksmithing or, you know, boot making, leather working, uh, braiding, um, anything that's out there on YouTube. It's actually, it's a really big community and it's really neat to be able to just, you know, why, why would we go and source something from, you know the, the latest gadget or trinket or whatever which i did some of that too we always do um kids want plastic stuff so you got to go shop for plastic stuff i don't know anybody that makes custom plastic stuff uh toys and cowboys and horses and stuff like that so um but in general it's really neat to have that source of being able to go and buy a special gift for somebody just like people do for us and they come to us they want us to make them a custom belt or a custom wallet or something like that it's really neat to be able to go out there and do that as well um, from our end because we're usually on the other end of the transaction. And so it was kind of fun this year to be on on the receiving end, I guess, or the consumer end to be able to go to their website and experience their their uh, front end or their storefront um, experience and, and purchase items, wait on items, have them come in, uh, the joy of opening the box and actually seeing those items you saw online in person. And so I think that's a really, really neat deal. So. Um, I'd kind of encourage everybody to do that maybe next year for Christmas or um, if you did if you didn't do that some people I know a lot of people already do that every year they try to find unique handmade gifts for people um, versus just going to Amazon or something like that um, not that there's anything wrong with that there's good stuff on there as well but I think buying locally especially during these times is pretty important it's important to us um, obviously because that's how we make our living if you're doing this full time or as, as a side hustle it's how we make money so um, I think we got to be a part of that as well. But um, maybe for next year, we'll kind of keep that going and uh, just purchase from people you know or people that craft you know, handmade goods and uh, for Father's Day, birthdays, whatever. I think people get a little bit more of an enjoyment out of getting something that is you know, handmade, made here or made locally, wherever you are locally. I think there's something about that that, that is just, it gives a little more meaning and um and i think it's something cool but we all always too we like getting the newest gadget you know the newest ipad or or newest video game if you're into video gaming or whatever um everybody's got something that they 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 really get excited about um when it comes to gifts so so do what you want but that's kind of what i'm going to try to do next year i think is just try to focus on that the main reason i i started thinking about that was just because of the podcast is that um we've got all these people on there and these people make things you know that that a lot of the people in my family a lot of my friends and stuff like that are very interested in that type of product and so we're going to try to partake in that a little bit more moving forward we're going to be done today in the shop with uh with custom orders i got one little gunsling to make they're friends of ours here in town and uh and a little money clip wallet and then we'll be finished up and then the rest of the week i've got to wrap up my christmas shopping which i don't have much left i'm pretty happy with how we did this year because usually we're not we don't even start shopping until i'm done in the shop but this year, I'm pretty much done. I've got a few little things I've got to get for the kids that we just haven't been to town yet to uh, to get those things. But other than that, everything's been been done. So basically, all I'm really trying to plan for is for actual Christmas Day event, which I've got my brother's coming down from Nashville, so he's going to be here, uh, and we're going to you know do some cooking, and we've got you know different things we're planning on doing there at mom's and hang out and spend Christmas together and all that stuff. So I'm trying to plan for that. So I want to be done today. Be out, um, I'll be in the shop and around the shop, but I may not be here um, all day, uh, all, all the rest of this week. So if you do need something or having an issue or something like that, just uh, email the shop or call me on the phone, uh, the shop phone and leave us a message if I don't answer, because I will be checking on that just to make sure that everybody's taken care of, everything made it where it's, or it needs to be, or if I need to track something or something like that. But I should be done today. Should be uh, um, be able to get out of here just a little bit. I've got one gift that I purchased for a certain someone that is going to logistically take a little bit of planning here, and I would like to have it. There's some installation that's required, and um, I'll just stop there. But there's some there's some things. It's going to be hard to. It's not something I can wrap, and so I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to navigate this deal. Um, without the recipient being aware of it. So we're going to try to figure that out, and um, I'll keep you posted on how that goes and let y'all know how that works. One other cool gift that I made, and I can show you these because the little buckaroo is not on uh, Instagram. He's too little. He's, uh, he's actually my son's age. It's his best friend, but it, we made a pair of little chinks. 
little little leggings. Uh, my boy has a pair that I made him a few years ago and it has really saved his jeans. I didn't really do it for that reason. He just wanted a pair of leggings. So we made him a pair, but he wears them all the time. Everywhere he goes, he's got his leggings on. Um, people get a kick out of it, but we ended up figuring out that he, with him wearing the leggings all the time, it really saves his jeans because he's always rolling around, crawling around, falling down. He, I think he's gonna be a Western uh, movie stunt man is what I think he's gonna be. But um, the leggings look like a cowboy's been working out of them for three years and uh, his jeans are perfect. He outgrows them, they still look great. We can hand them down to a friend or family member. And uh, so that's a little hint. If you've got little ones and they're tearing the knees out of their jeans from crawling around in the dirt and playing in the gravel and all that kind of stuff, build them a little pair of leggings like this, just a little pair of chinks. And you would be surprised at how much they will wear them, especially the little boy. I've made my daughter a pair, but she doesn't want to wear them very often. Um, but he wears them all the time, and so it'll really help you save save on their clothing. And they outgrow clothing so fast that it seems like we're always buying clothes for them. Um, so if I can save some of those and be able to hand them down, that's that's kind of helpful. So, but yeah, we made these. Um, these go together really good. I don't know. I might do a pattern for these one of these days, but I don't have them really dialed in. I just kind of halfway make them. Um, and size them to where they can kind of grow into them, but they're not super super big when they first get them And honestly, you know, he's got two pair the first pair he outgrew this pair He's got now I already need to replace some of the straps on here because he's getting to the last holes on some of these But we'll just kind of see um, maybe a project in the future, but I'm, I'm not planning on it anytime soon But that's our little leggings. Like I said, they real real easy use speed rivets on them just so it was quick and uh and didn't do a whole lot of fancy stuff. Just uh, just besides the tooling, did a little bit of tooling on there. But he'll get those Christmas morning. He doesn't know about those, but he won't watch this video. So that's not a problem. And then, like I said, I've got just a little gunsling to finish up uh, today, real simple. And then a uh, and then a money clip wallet. And then I should be should be good to go and done. I'll kind of tidy up the shop a little bit for the rest of the day and uh, check on some orders, make sure they got delivered and then go from there. One cool thing, we had a friend of ours, his dad, and uh, he's a friend too, but he used to work down in Yoakum for years and years and years. Uh, many of y'all may know, but Yoakum was the, uh, I guess they, they called themselves the leather capital of the world, but they there was many, many companies down there in Yoakum that uh, made belts, saddles, Textan was down there, Hereford was down there. Uh, those are two saddle companies. There was just a ton of leather uh, manufacturing companies down there and there still is circle y is still located in yokum texas um there's there's just a lot of other companies that are still there today but he had worked there and retired you know from the industry and and worked in that industry for i don't know maybe 30 years 40 years and he came by one day and uh, we've got to know him a little bit and he brought us a bunch of old catalogs that he had that are just you know in his office that he just he has no use for him now you know he's retired bailing hay running turning some cows and stuff like that and he thought we might get a kick out of looking at him he said look at them do what you want to with them throw them in a dumpster if you don't want them but these are really neat i would never throw these in the dumpster um, a lot of these you know maybe not my style particularly but there's tons of ideas in here and this is one thing i wanted to show you this the reason i want to show you this is if you ever run across these old catalogs that you know the old retail catalogs or whatever companies used to send these out anybody that manufactured products and some people still do many people just have a website nowadays but if you run across any of these you know some of these are aren't that old they're from 2005 2004 some of these are from the 80s um, there's some in here from the 70s and those are really neat to pull back because you're talking what is that 50 years ago and to pull these up and to kind of go through here and look at them you can get a lot of inspiration um, for either, you know, uh, design of a product or tooling patterns, any of that kind of stuff. You can really go through there. And a lot of times it's funny, you can pull those patterns back into the, you know, into the, into the market, so to speak, and tool something up. And people haven't seen these patterns. You, you and I, depending on your age, you may have remembered, you know, your dad had a belt like that or your dad had a gun sling with that pattern on it, whatever it might be. But there's some some folks out there that maybe in their early 20s that are getting a leather work that are, are even just wanting to purchase purchase leather products that have never seen that pattern, never seen anything like that. And it's, it just kind of brings back that trend. We see it all the time in clothing and stuff like that. Things things make a cycle. You know, they, they go out of style and then 20 years later, they're back in style and everybody's wearing bell bottoms again. So um, it's just kind of kind of neat to have these. I was really thankful for him to bring these by. I couldn't believe he had so many of them. 
and um, I haven't had a chance to really look at look through all of them but there's just some really neat designs some of it is nylon stuff but you can take the concept of some of these bags or some of these uh, gun slings or you know gun pouches or whatever and you can kind of um, belts and, and all that kind of stuff and you can kind of come up with your own version of that looking at something from a different angle so i highly recommend if you know anybody or you're in a maybe an antique store or something you see some of the old catalogs especially with saddles a lot of people will do that with saddles they'll save the old saddle catalogs from the turn of the century and uh and just save those and use those as kind of inspiration for saddle design uh skirt shapes you can you can take little bits and pieces from different ideas and uh and incorporate those into what what you're doing today and it can really give it a, a real cool different look um it's kind of one of those things like we've talked about before they claim that there's nothing there's no new music everything's been done and i think to some extent that's probably true but everything's just manipulated you can take something old and make it new again um without straight up copying it you know um, that's not the point of, of of having these or the point of doing these but it's uh it's one of those deals where you can look at it get some ideas and then expand upon those with a, a kind of a, a more contemporary look at it uh, when you're looking at something that's kind of old and vintage. And so I'm excited about those. We'll put probably put these on a bookshelf. I want to put a bookshelf on the retail floor, I think, and then have, because we got a bunch of the Leather Crafters journals. We get the Shop Talk. We've got these catalogs here. Um, somewhere I have a bunch of old Leather Crafters journals, and uh, I would like to just kind of put those out there on display for you know, people that come in or whatever, they want to flip through some of those, they can check them out and kind of look at them. Um, and they're better, you know, on a bookshelf than they are in a box underneath one of my workbenches. Um, but, but that's what I'm, that's what my kind of idea is. I think I might do something like that here at some point. So that's really what's going on in the workshop. Let's get out there and do a snowman update right quick so we can all get back to work, make this last little push and get finished. All right, guys, so there we are. Best I can figure, we're four days. So four or five days. Um, I've given up on counting this so i just count it how i count it and then go from there but it's four days till christmas christmas will be on saturday and um so we're pretty much done everybody should be pretty wrapping up most of their gifts hopefully none of y'all are having to tool up until christmas eve but if you are just keep keep at it keep pushing you'll finish it up they always do there's nothing to worry about um you're just going to be stressed out but that's okay just remember what we said earlier when we first started doing the snowman updates and the after thanksgiving and getting the christmas season just look at what you're doing right now and make notes of things that you could have done better or that you should have done that you can incorporate for next year. Every year is a learning experience. This year, for me included, uh, this was the shortest Christmas season that I've had because I didn't take a lot of stuff. Again, like I mentioned before, because we had the sale for Black Friday that we were getting ready for in the shop, and then we had the Mingle on Main. So I really only had a couple of weeks there to really focus on building stuff in the shop and i knew that was going to happen so i didn't take as much i probably still took a few more than i should have um, that's why we didn't finish up like our goal was to ship everything by the 10th we weren't able to do that um, and that's that's something that i'm learning as i go along that my our christmas in here now with dg leathercraft in, in the picture is going to have to change some because there's only so much of my time available during the christmas season um, with with as much time as dg leathercraft takes during that season so those are just some of the things like like that that I would ask for you to do is just right now just kind of even if you're you know still having to hustle you still you're hoping to get everything out by Thursday that's fine just keep keep pushing but keep your little notepad and keep some notes of some things you could have done different it's not to beat yourself up it's to remember those things by next year so that you don't forget when when a full year comes around and you're in the same position next year it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to to say man I could have done that better I should have done this I should have done that it's fine to do that. But don't do that every single year, at least on the same subject, you know, kind of make some notes, make some changes and uh, try some different things. Sometimes it's going to work. Sometimes it's not. Um, you may, you know, it took me 15 years to finally figure out a good system to where I wasn't tooling Christmas Eve trying to figure finish something. Um, I don't want it to take that long for you. So that's why I keep bringing it up. That's why I'm trying to help you just to kind of make you think about stuff and just kind of see what's going on. If this is your first Christmas season, then I feel for you next year, it'll be better. You'll know, you'll have a better idea of, of honestly how many things you can build in a week or in a day, um, how long something actually takes you, things like that. So just kind of keep, keep a note, keep, uh, stay mindful and just kind of think about those things. As you move through the Christmas season, you'll be done Christmas day. You'll be able to relax, have some eggnog, whatever, open some gifts 
and uh, and breathe easy and then get ready to start 2022. I want to thank everybody for this year. This year has been amazing for Claudia and I being here and, and the kids uh, being in a good school that we enjoy, being in a great community that we enjoy. We want to thank everybody so much for being a part of DG Leathercraft, the newsletter. And also, if you just want to be here just to purchase leather goods, we appreciate you as well. We're really excited about how much DG Leathercraft has grown in the last year and a half that we've been here. I just want to give everybody a big thank you. Tell everybody Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I hope everybody enjoys their week off or weekend or days off, whatever you're getting. This will be the last video that we do before Christmas Day, so I want to take this time to wish you all a Merry Christmas and thank you all so much for being a part of DG Leathercraft. We can't thank you all enough. And for everybody that sent us the Christmas cards, um, we've gotten a bunch of them in the shop, and it's been really cool to see everybody's you know, family Christmas card and that kind of stuff, and, and for you all to consider us and send us one. We really, really appreciate that. Everybody have a great holiday season. Spend time with your family. Hopefully you get a few days off. You get to relax, and we'll see you all next week in the Monday Morning Briefing.